Hey, welcome to the home edition of Shop. Uh, Cynthia and I are here at Mariano's and we're picking up our basket ingredients. I'm going to pick out four entree items for her and she's going to pick out four items for me to make a dessert with. And we're going to meet here at the front of the store in about uh, 20 minutes or so. And uh, thanks for the uh, input and suggestions that I got on Facebook. And we'll see where this thing goes. Thank you. Okay, we have our chopped basket here ready to be opened up. And the uh, entree will be done in the first round here, and it will be evaluated on taste, presentation, and creativity. So, Cynthia, open it up. See what we got. All right, I'm ready. Shiitake mushrooms. Ooh, yum. Ooh. Fig spread. Canned whole tomatoes. Oh, how are we going to get some? And flank steak. Wait, we got to get Plus we have, Cynthia, what? a culinary curveball. There's only four items it's supposed to be. That's from... Uh, Master Chef, that, or no. Iron Chef America. Iron Chef America. But here it is! <laughs> the Culinary Curveball. Ooh! A package of eight different types of cereals. Do I have to use all eight? You can use some or all of the basket ingredients. Oh, some or all of the basket ingredients? Yes. So I don't have to use all the basket ingredients? You have to use all you said some the basket all. ingredients in some way. <laughs> Okay. 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 Cut. <laughs> well, when I saw the first four items, I was excited. Flank stick, mushrooms, tomatoes. And, you know, how can you make a bad meal out of that? And then he threw the culinary curveball. Cereal. What can I do with the cereal, I thought to myself. <sighs> but when you have the skills, it'll be no. So, the basket ingredients are flank steak, whole peeled tomatoes in a can, fig paste, a, an eight pack of cereal, and shiitake mushrooms. Oh, Cynthia, what are you going to make with that? Well, obviously I'm going to make some kind of flank steak here, which is a very expensive cut of meat, and it really needs to cook a long time, however. So I'm not sure how this is going to work. But first thing, I'm going to brown it on both sides. And then, Ted, out of my way, please. And then I need to get started on the tomatoes because they have to cook a while to lose that canning taste. So they taste like fresh tomatoes. 45 minutes and the time starts now. So I noticed that you took some green peppers and onions out of the uh, pantry. What out do you plan to make with that? Well, actually, Ted, I took them out of the fridge. And onions, green pepper, and mushroom go good together. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with them, but I thought I might as well get them started cooking. So, Cheerios. What do you plan to do with that besides beating it to a pulp with a well, meat mallet? Well, I'm beating them, as you said, with the meat mallet, and they're going to be little pieces of Cheerios. Where? In the vegetable medley, or...? Well, it looks like Cynthia has all three uh, burners going here with the uh, tomatoes, the flank steak being browned and simmered, and the vegetable medley. We're adding a little wine to the tomatoes and the flank steak and the vegetables. Wine makes everything taste better, Ted. So the fourth basket ingredient, the fig jam, is going into the vegetables, it looks like. Well, I'm hoping this big jam is really good with cheese and crackers, but I have no cheese and no crackers. But it's got a nice sweet taste. So I'm thinking it'll add a little sweet to the acidity of the onions and the brassiness of the steak. Hey, Chef. What are we doing here, Chef? Well, now I'm adding my deliciously seasoned vegetables to the fresh Cheerios. And I think it's going to add a nice center to my flank steak Romanald. The flank steak appears to be resting now. 
Jeff appears to be cutting the flank steak uh, right down the center lengthwise here. Jeff, what's going on? Well, Ted, what I'm doing now is something never been done in human cookery. <laughs> I am butterflying this flank steak. So then I can roll it up. It was just too thick to roll on its own. I can put this stuff on it. So a vegetable stuffed romalaya. And then I'm gonna oh yes, and then I'm gonna roll it up. Oh. And we'll and cut it into little pinwheels. Sounds impressive, Chef. I should get some creativity points for this. So we have vegetable stuffed flank steak rolls. Pinwheels. Pinwheels. And it's going into the oven for uh, for how long, Chef? Well, till it's time to plate. I hopefully they'll tenderize enough. You don't know. What's the time, Ted? We have 17 minutes. Chef, I noticed the shiitake mushrooms here are in the pan. What do we, what's the plan with those? Well, we're having mushrooms two ways, Ted. Uh, the first way, of course, is in the vegetables and the ramenade. And then this is going to be a lovely shiitake mushroom garnish. Looks like we're putting, we're saucing the uh, ramenades here with uh, the tomato-based sauce. Well, it's been cooking a half an hour. I hope that's enough time to get that tinny taste out. But if not, there's some wine in there, so it'll be fine. The accompanying wine is a Pigmentum Malbec. Jeff, we have two minutes. Oh, and no. Counting. I better start plating. Plating these in bowls instead of uh, typical plates. Why is that? Because there's a lot of sauce here, Ted. We want to make sure we get all that delicious sauce. And it is five, four, three, two, one. Step away. Congratulations, Chef. Chef Cynthia, talk about your dish. Well, I've prepared for you today a Romaldi, I think that's what it is, a flank steak <laughs> with a Cheerio vegetable mushroom center and just some fresh mashed potatoes on the side with a tomato sauce. And the judging begins. So I'm cutting into this uh, beef romalade. I think it was a very creative idea to use the flank steak as a as a roll up here with the the vegetables and we've got a side dish here of looks like mashed potatoes and a little shiitake mushroom garnish oh no the flank steak has a really good flavor it's tender which is hard to do in the short length short length of time we had here and the vegetables kind of come through too which is very nice here the tomato sauce with the combination of the flank steak, it really is kind of a, a comfort food dish, and it really, uh, really is excellent, outstanding. And the mushrooms just kind of add a little touch, a little dour savor there. Have the uh, shiitake mushroom here. It's kind of, I know it's a garnish here on the side, but I think I would have been happier if you would have incorporated that into the dish a little more. It was in the dish. It was in the vegetables. It was mushrooms two ways. Okay. Stop the home edition. The dessert round with Chef Mark. And the basket chopped. The home edition. The dessert round with Chef Mark. Chef, open your basket. All right. And the ingredients are... Oh, we got the... Pound, pound cake. cake. Already made for you, Chef. Creme fraiche. Creme fraiche. Uh, Ghirardelli. Chocolate. Chocolate bar. Wonderful ingredients. So and far. bacon. And bacon. Okay. For the dessert round, the ingredients are pound cake, creme fraiche, bacon, and Ghirardelli chocolate bar. So the basket ingredients are pound cake, which I love, just as is, and uh, Ghirardelli bittersweet chocolate, bacon, and creme fraiche. I mean, if I had my way, I'd just like cut off a big hunk of that pound cake cook some bacon, crisscross it like a British burger at Denny's, and then put some creme fraiche on top of that and drizzle it with chocolate. But the uh, point here is to reconstitute things, so I'm going to be in trouble with 
with that. The bittersweet chocolate, I'm going to have to add some sugar to that to make it a little sweeter. So uh, we'll see where it goes. Time starts now. 45 minutes in the clark, clock to make a delicious dessert using the basket ingredients. Go Chef Mark. Pretty challenging uh, basket ingredients. Well, it, this should be an interesting round. Um, I'm not sure that Mark actually knows what the pantry, what's in the pantry. I, I'm not sure he actually knows where the pantry is. Um, and I know he's not sure what's in the refrigerator. So, finding other ingredients to enhance the basket ingredients, I think that's really going to be the challenge for Chef Mark. <laughs> Chef, I see you're in the pantry. I'm looking for brown sugar and I don't know where it is. Do we have can canisters of stuff or is it like in a bag or something like that? There's sugar. Uh, here is confectioner sugar. I might be able to use that later on. But I can't find any brown sugar unless it's uh, up here. Okay, Chef Mark, think, of, think a minute. There's sugar and there's sugar? confectioner sugar. Yeah. Where would the brown sugar Next to be? It. I found it. Bacon, but I, I, do we have a bigger pan to cook the bacon in? I don't know. Okay, I see you with a griddle in your hand, Chef. What are you doing here? I was looking for a bigger pan to cook bacon in, and I think... You can actually cook. I found that I'm gonna cook bacon in there. I think. Chef Mark, I see you're putting bacon in the big pan you found. Oh. Yes. Uh, what are you gonna do with that bacon? I am going to prepare this uh, as you typically would a bacon, but this is dessert, so it needs to be a little bit sweeter. So we're gonna add some uh, brown sugar to that and candy a little bit, make a little uh, caramelized uh, bacon here. And then after you have your caramelized bacon, what are you gonna do with it? I think we're going to incorporate that into the. Uh, pound cake somehow, but I'm not really sure yet what's going to happen with that yet. Chef Mark, I see you looking in the fridge for a few minutes here. What exactly are you looking for? Well, actually, this is the first time I've looked in the refrigerator for a, for a while. Um, <laughs> not sure what's in here, but I see some chocolate syrup. But I got chocolate already, <laughs> so maybe you don't need that. Ketchup? No. Uh, whole grain mustard? I don't think that's going to work. I'll, I'll figure it out. Chef Mark, I see the bacon cooking nicely in the pan. Uh, at what point were you going to add the brown sugar? I think in a few minutes after it cooks. Chef, I see you're doing something with yeah, I'm the cutting out the cake, the, uh, cake here in, in rounds. This can be my serving dish too. I'm not sure what. Uh, of course, this takes up the whole the whole dish. You know, yeah. I don't know if I can really serve it like that. Let's see. Let's see where that goes. Hang on. Um. Uh, bacon got a little. Uh, chef, you've used up almost 20 minutes, and it looks like you've just used one of the basket ingredients, oh, I used kind of right. the second one. What are you yeah. going to do with that creme fresh? That was a disaster. And, on that uh, the chocolate. Okay, well, I, I overcooked the bacon a little bit. I think there's, I can get some crispy bacon bits out of that, which I plan to mix in a nice uh, chocolate sauce. I'm going to make sort of the, uh, a deconstructed cream puff out of the pound cake here. I'm going to fill it with some creme fraiche and then have a nice chocolate glaze top of it. Yum. Sounds good. good. So I'm adding the uh, confectioner sugar here to the creme fraiche to sweeten it up a little bit uh, for the uh, sabayon that's going to go inside the, my deconstructed cream puff.
Ah, uh, Chef, I see you're using the, I think, last basket ingredient, the 60% uh, cacao. Yeah, and we got to keep in mind, this is a, uh, it's a bittersweet chocolate, it's high cacao, it's 60%. And we are going to have to sweeten this up, but uh, first I'm going to put a nice little melt on it, and then I'll add a little bit of uh, sugar to it to sweeten it up, and I think we're going to get there. Maybe a little corn syrup for a nice uh, satiny glaze in the top. And how are you going to melt it up? I see you're putting it in a ceramic bowl. In the microwave. Chef Mark, I see you just turned on the oven. What are you going to do in I'm, the oven? Uh, well, what I want to do is, is sort of, you know, to get that uh, kind of the hardness of the uh, cream puff, I'm going to put a little bake on these before I uh, load them with the, uh, the topping here, the cream and the, uh, the chocolate melting, which I have over here. And uh, the bacon, I'm still on the fence about here. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that. If it's going to be just crumbles on the top, uh, we'll have to wait and see on that one. You just put those in. What? Oh, what are you doing now? I'm making little like, chocolate tartlets out of this. And uh, and then I think, uh, you know, this will sort of harden a little bit in here, but I hope not too much. It'll be a nice little surprise when you when you get into it. and That, that bite, you know, that first bite you have where you dig all the way down and you get the sweetness of that. And, uh, and kind of the crunchiness of the uh, of the pound cake there. That's the goal anyway. It's going to be crunchy pound cake. It'll be more like a profiterol. <laughs> Chef, I see you found something in the fridge. Yeah, maraschino cherries. I think they're you know it really kind of takes you back to your childhood. You have a Sunday and you <laughs> you kind of remember that cherry on top, and that's kind of what this is going to be. It's going to elicit those memories of being a kid. And, Having something sweet. Chef Mark exhibiting his knife skills. Chop these up too. The bacon looks a little done, Chef Mark. No, oh, it's it's uh, got a little extra crispy. You know, there's nothing wrong with a nice crunch. You know, and I think when I combine that with the cherries, we're going to have a nice little topper on this dessert. So the uh, chocolate is is getting a little hard. So what I'm going to do is add some corn syrup to it and put it back in the microwave for a little while. So it has that velvety texture that I'm looking for. Chef, I see you looking in the fridge again. What are we looking I'm for? I'm trying to find some cream cheese in the pantry. Uh, but it's not here, plainly. So. Oh. I wonder what that is in there. Oh, it's an Easter egg hunt. That's nice. <laughs> I'm so happy to see that there. That's good. Thank you. How's that cream cheese working out for you? Oh, it's it's coming there. It's like, you know it's a little hard to work with at first because it really was kind of hard, hard cream cheese. But I think it's gonna meld in there very nicely after a while. You're sounding a bit out of breath, Chef. I'm out of breath. Yes. <laughs> You have about six minutes left. Okay, thank you. Chef Mark, I see your faux profiterol, profiteroles are out of the oven. What's the next step? They're kind of crunchy on top, which is what I wanted. And now i got to make sure that they have uh, sat long enough. And this is what I'm worried about, that I have enough time to let them cool before I put on, put on the creme fraiche and the, uh, the bacon and maraschino cherry uh, topping. So what are you going to do while you're waiting for them to cool? Um, oh, I got, I got some ideas. Oh, Chef, you must have a strong right hand. I do. I need to make sure this thing is not lumpy at all. Yeah, it's, uh, it's going to take a little work. I'm doing this instead of using the blender. I think... Uh, I Why think is that? The chef will be able to taste the love out of this thing uh, that I'm putting into it. Chef Mark, we're approaching... The two-minute mark. Okay, I think we're. You might want to plate. start plating. Okay. 
Okay, we've got the plate trap. I wanted to add a little something to the plate. Like something, some little fresh thing, like a piece of, like a slice of orange or a sprig of mint. Well, or where something. would an orange be, maybe? Um, you got me on another rooster egg hunt, don't you? Maybe in the refrigerator. Maybe. Maybe. Let's check it. Let's take a look. Is there an orange in here? Oh, there is a pound of tomato. <laughs> Orange colored, but okay. No, there's no oranges. If Mark is still on the hunt for an orange, oh, he's looking in the fruit and vegetable crisper. Got it. The chef, you have 28 seconds. How are you feeling? Very confident, very comfortable. All right, Chef. Eight, seven, six, five, oop, two, one. Time's up. Hey, hey. <laughs> stop. Okay, hey. Stop. <laughs> so I look down at my plate and I see that it's it's all come together. They look kind of like cream puffs. I'm not sure how the bacon is gonna the bacon and the uh, cherries are gonna work with that, but I'm happy with the chocolate and the uh, the cream in there. I think the uh, pound cake's going to taste good. Oh, Cynthia has chosen a nice uh, Italian Prosecco to go along with this, which I think is an excellent choice. So, Chef, what I have for you uh, today is a Deconstructed cream puff and reconstructed cream puff uh, made with pound cake, um, creme fraiche, a little bit of uh, cream cheese in there, uh, maraschino cherries, and candied bacon on top, and uh, drizzled chocolate both in the center and on top. Hope you enjoy it. Oh, Judge, what do you think? Well, it's interesting that you call it a deconstructed, reconstructed <laughs> cream puff. <laughs> but that aside, um, I don't think I got any bacon, or if I did, it's just a little piece like right there. Um, very interesting idea. Love the idea. I would have liked to see the pound cake repurposed a little more. It tastes as though you just made a circle of pound cake and scooped out a little and put stuff in it. Uh, I would like to send maybe a, you know, pan pardu or a bread pudding, uh, something like that. But um, it the taste is there. There is taste. And um, 